Another huge chemical is a sort of class is um, what's known as fragrance, synthetic fragrance. When you just see that ingredient fragrance in products, that is a synthetic cocktail of chemicals. Um, it can be dozens to actually hundreds of chemicals. There's persistent chemicals that are added in there to make the fragrance last longer. So if you see marketing about long, fresh scent, lasts long in your clothes, your room will smell fresh you know, for a very long time. Buyer beware. Um, that means those are very persistent chemicals. And the more persistent chemicals are, the more long-lived they are in your body and the more problematic they are. Uh, surveys suggest that up to 25% of the population, possibly more, are no longer tolerant of these chemicals. They're meaning that they're actively noticing that they're getting headaches, that they're not feeling well after exposure. And this can be anything from fragrance laundry detergent to air freshener, to cleaning products, to even things in your shampoo. So um, look for simpler solutions, um, even if it just means opening the window. Um, but look for non-fragranced products and simpler solutions. If you, you know, want to go the more natural fragrance route, that's fine. Some people don't even tolerate that for various reasons, but anything that's synthetic fragrance, I would, especially if it's long lived, you know, um, stay away from. And um, the problem is too, that if you, if you use these, uh, fragrance products for a long time, you don't smell it anymore. They're actually designed so that you don't smell them so that you'll want more of them in order to get that scent. And people who don't use these products, they, um, they can smell them even if you can't. And usually they're, they smell them and they're having a negative reaction, okay? Um, then there's plastics. Uh, they are off-gassing all the time. They reach into our food, you know, if you're using plastic as storage. They mimic hormones, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, they're... They're toxic, but they're also very attractive to our biology, which is not a good combination. And they don't break down, they just break down into these microplastics and they contaminate everything. Um, they have now been found in the human lungs. Um, they've been found in the human placenta. So they really get around. So if you can reduce your use of plastics, move over to glass, stainless steel, uh, get those um, canvas bags and use them, that will be a benefit to you. And also I will mention that there are um, a lot of clothes made out of synthetic fabrics, which are essentially plastics. So if you can migrate your way toward natural fabrics, um, I would recommend that. So these are recommendations from me about that. You, you know, take them as you will and what makes sense for you. Okay, I wanna talk about how toxic chemicals cause chronic illness. Um, I really think it's important to understand this, um, that connection to get that in your head because it'll help you understand how to, um, you know, how to kind of look at some of the, the symptoms or, or problems that you might yourself be having. So um, neurotoxicity, neurotoxicity um, is toxicity to the nerves of your body. And, uh, you know, you think of sort of the nerves as the sort of that electrical connection in your body, but they're also regulating um, when your muscles move or don't move, whether they spasm, they relax. Um, it regulates your, your brain function, whether you feel calm or tense. Um, and we do have a lot of chemicals that are toxic to the nervous system, especially in that class of pesticides, which yeah, you know, everything from insecticides to biocides and things like that. Um, and, um, I have people who've written in to me that said, you know, I started eating organic or I moved to food that was not sprayed with pesticides and my symptoms of, um, Parkinson's disease significantly reduced. Okay. So what they're experiencing is with diseases like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, um, uh, if you have something where you've got some slurred speech going, some weakness, some coordination issues, um, it might behoove you to look into, you know, just kind of audit what you're putting in, on, around your body that might be neurotoxic. Uh, anything in that pesticides class is really, really big. Uh, but also I would look at the fragrance, all that, those kind of fragrance categories because of that cocktail of chemicals in there. Um, but in general, cleaning up your environment 
is um, chances are is going to help you. It certainly did help me. Okay, then we've got um, immune system disorders. So this is something that, um, you know, is a big thing that people don't really, it's not recognized, it's not taught, unfortunately, to doctors, but there's research out there, and there's tons of research on this about how toxic chemicals undermine our immune system. Um, and they do this in, in several ways. So one way is they just, they weaken our immune system and they actually can have certain, um, so attributes to them that help activate germs and bacteria. Like they actually activate them because a lot of, if you think about our ambient environment, it's full of germs and mold and bacteria and everything else. Um, but they're just sort of dormant and they stay dormant until something causes them to activate and, um, you know, leads to infection. Same thing in our bodies, like we're full of germs, right? Our whole intestines are just tons of bacteria and viruses and things. So, um, but they're just kind of in this neutral state. Um, chemicals can both activate these germs in a bad way, but they can also weaken our immune system so that we're not able to maintain a homeostasis. And um, so things can seep in, like right now, we're just at hopefully knock on with the tail end of a pandemic, right? Um, and unfortunately, the people who, um, you know, scientists are finding that the people who have higher exposures to toxic chemicals are having a harder time with COVID. And that makes sense based on all the research we've done in the past on how toxic chemicals weaken our immune system. People also developed allergies to substances that the body perceives as being toxic because it's been so bombarded with toxic substances, you know, things that truly are toxic. So you might live in an area with really bad air pollution and then develop allergies, you know, seasonal allergies. And it's because your body's just sort of, you know, freaked out and it's sort of seeing that the, um, you know, sometimes the, the, the molecules that are in the air pollution are similar to the molecules that are you know, coming off the trees or the body just perceives them as being similar and starts to um, have an allergic reaction. So our, our bodies just don't like these foreign substances. These are sort of, um, we have created just hundreds and thousands of chemicals, hundreds of thousands of chemicals that did not exist in nature. Um, and so we've, we've synthetically made them and introduced them into our environment in a very short period of time. In less than a hundred years, we've been exposed to so many chemicals and our bodies are just overwhelmed. You know, they're trying to understand what to do with these chemicals, what they are, how to eliminate them. Um, and that in itself is a burden on our immune system and the entire function of our bodies. Then I want to mention um, autoimmune disorders because they are also really growing. Um, you know, this can be anything from fibromyalgia and lupus to uh, joint inflammation, uh, you know, any kind of problems with, with the immune system where it's the, the sort of the common lingo is that the immune system is attacking itself. Um, but if you look a little bit deeper in, generally the immune system tends not to attack itself. It's trying to attack something else that has lodged itself in your body that's hard to get rid of. And one giant culprit of that are what are known as persistent bioaccumulative and toxic chemicals. Um, so these are persistent chemicals that do not break down easily um, that lodge themselves in our body. So they can lodge themselves in the muscles and within the cells within receptors, different you know, receptors and hormone receptors, for example, things that the body does, but also in our bones, you know, in our joints. Um, and as we sort of keep accumulating these chemicals or exposed to them over time, at some point the body just is unhappy. It doesn't like them. Those chemicals don't belong there. They might be interfering with some process. And so the immune system tries to pull them up, but they're sticky, they're hard to get rid of. There's a lot of inflammation. And so what we're experiencing are um, autoimmune symptoms. So all that inflammation and that, that pain that we're experiencing is part of our immune system trying to deal with everything. So um, it's going to behoove us to reduce, again, exposure as much as possible, and also um, to work on detox. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about detox later, also from that personal experience. Mm -hmm.